What's up, Doc? You might wonder what's going through your doctor's mind while you're being examined. Reader's Digest polled dozens of physicians across the country. Its cover story, What Your Doctor Is Really Thinking, is out today. Editor-in-Chief Liz Vaccarello is here, along with our own Dr. Holly Phillips. And good morning, both of you. Good morning. Um, the doctors that you polled uh, say that uh, they welcome their patients' emails within reason. Right. Really. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have a single doctor who will accept my emails, but we talked to one surgeon, for example, who said, um, I want you to feel comfortable heading into surgery. If you have 30 questions, send me 30 emails, but don't expect 30 emails back. I may call you and answer your, all of your questions. Uh, but Holly, isn't that a distraction for a doctor to be fielding emails all, all day? You know, Jane, for some things, it's actually really efficient. You know, never email your doctor about something urgent, because we might not get it to it till the end of the day um, and it's good just for specific things maybe follow up from an appointment if you're asking questions about a medication but it is not the place to list all of your symptoms and hope to come out with a diagnosis Liz you also found out that doctors said they're not worried about a Google search what do you mean yeah I, I thought that doctors would roll their eyes when you walk in with three inches of every study that affects every one of your symptoms but they well they said that that's an informed patient and if somebody walks in with that kind of material that means they're gonna have a good conversation yeah. So what don't doctors like? Well, they don't like when you're when you're on your phone texting. Okay. When you're, I'll tell you that. Yeah, okay. um, and they don't like when you're late um, mm -hmm. to the appointment. And they often are late themselves. But there's usually a good reason for that. But mm -hmm. wouldn't it be better in, in a waiting room where you're? We're all waiting, that's what we call the waiting room, waiting and waiting <laughs> for an appointment at X o'clock. Right. That doctors should find a way to say, sorry for the delay, we had a, an emergency, we have. Yeah. That's a good point, Jane. An explanation would yeah, make a things, yeah, a little yeah. heads up or an explanation. But one doctor said, you know, if I'm in um, the next room and I'm talking to a teenager who just admitted that she might have suicidal tendencies, I'm going to spend an extra 15 minutes with you, mm -hmm. um, and I'm but not going. Everybody gonna, would understand that. Uh, everybody they? would understand that. And if you're somebody who's never gone double sure. the time with your doctor, you're one of the lucky ones. Well, also that's a good thing. You know, when your doctor's waiting room is packed and they're actually running late, it's a pain if you're the one waiting. But but on the other hand, you want the type of doctor who's going to take the extra time with you if you're the one that needs it. So it's really a balance. Tell me how to address the second opinion question. <laughs> yeah, I love second opinions. I have to say, I, I don't, I've never experienced it as something where doctors are undermining each other. You know, two sets of doctor's eyes on a difficult case is better, really, than mm. one. I often seek second opinions myself. If I have a difficult yeah. case, yeah. one of the first things I do, mm. I call it the phone a friend mm. option. Yeah, I pick up and I call a colleague. You're a doctor. Do you you're, think you represent the majority opinion? You know, I do think most doctors phone each other, ask for advice, and if you do it within reason and you're open about it, I think most doctors would welcome second opinions. And that's what you found in your survey, that most doctors welcome second opinions? Yeah, they do. They say either it validates what I've done and it gives the patient more confidence mm. in, in the direction we're going, or I've learned something. Or it's not a vote of no confidence? Mm -hmm. Well, if, if it's a different path, that it might be, you know, we no. have to have more of a conversation. Or maybe I just didn't know enough, or I didn't, or this wasn't my area of expertise. Yeah. So yeah, they it's, welcome. It's probably helpful the for the patient to explain to the doctor why they, you know, what is it about a second opinion that they think would help them? Well, it's not an insult to the doctor, it sure. is just my own ability to understand and feel better. And sometimes, yeah. you know, doctors get involved. If, if there's something where the case doesn't feel like it's going the way it should, sometimes I will actually suggest a person for them to see as a second opinion or as a specialty uh, referral. So it's not, you know, it's not that you have to do it in secret. Your doctor can actually help you with that process. Mm -hmm. This was really helpful. Really great yeah. piece. Yeah, really enjoyed it. Dr. Holly Phillips and Liz Vaccarello, thank you.